Welcome to another episode of A Conversation with Father Orsi. I'm B.C. Cloutier, President of Action for Life, and this is Father Michael Orsi. How are you, Father? Hey, I'm doing okay. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. We just passed Ash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It was something unique this year. It was also Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, and it occurred to me as I was contemplating that uh, there is uh, a lot of um, uh, similarity between uh, Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday. How you figure? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> well, Valentine's Day is about the love of a spouse or a significant other. Uh, and Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the 40 days of Lent leading up to Easter, is about the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So in both cases, we're celebrating love. In the Catholic religion, we traditionally make some sort of sacrifice for Lent, mm -hmm. those 40 days. And uh, it can be any number of things. People, Some people are serious about it. Some people are not. Um, I tend to think about it. Last year, I gave up meat and alcohol. <gasps> Which was truly, How did you live? <laughs> <laughs> truly a sacrifice. <laughs> so, uh, the this... I can understand. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, but just kidding. <laughs> no martinis for 40 days. But this year, I'm going to go even further. I think you know, Father, that I uh, sometimes use coarse language. No. That is particularly true on the golf course. Mm -hmm. So, I have decided for this 40 days of Lent, I am going to uh, set aside $5 for every time I slip and use a curse word. And at the end of that time, I'm going to donate that money to some worthwhile charity. Mm -hmm. So $5 a clip, I think it's going to cost me probably between five and $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> if I play golf with you, it would be about a million. <laughs> you know, I look like, you know, folks, you remember the Honeymooners with... Uh, Jackie Gleason and, and, and Art Carney, yeah. they were practically was trying to teach Ralph how to play golf. <laughs> it says, address the ball. What does that mean? Hello, ball. Get <laughs> <laughs> your feet firmly. Hello, ball. <laughs> <laughs> ah, those were the days, my friends. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, the significance of the 40 days. Mm -hmm. It, I think, relates back to Jesus' 40, 40 days of prayer in the desert. Right, right. right. And um, how did the, the practice of Lent come to be? It's not the same 40 days, I don't believe, is it? I think what we're looking at with the, uh, the Lenten uh, sacrifices, first of all, it is uh, reminiscent of the time that our Lord did spend in the desert 40 days before he began his, his public ministry. A lot of times people don't realize that uh, fasting is a very, very important part of the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. There are three things that we know, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Now, we're told that the greatest of those three are the almsgiving. Almsgiving, yeah. yeah. Uh, why it's that great act of charity that I'm giving to someone uh, who is in need. And a lot of us, uh, maybe we're not as charitable as we should be. Um, because when you are charitable, you're taking something away from yourself and you are denying yourself something to give it to another person. And, and that becomes an act of love. Now, Oftentimes, when we deny ourselves something, people can say, well, I would deny something to myself for the good of my children. And that's kind of a, a no-brainer. That's a, a no-brainer. Uh, there's a book uh, called The Moral Sense uh, by James Q. Wilson. And uh, he said that the closer you get in blood, uh, the more charitable you will be. But as it begins to ripple out, you become less and less conscious of those that are out there and feel a, a less and less uh, sense of an obligation to take care of these people. Yeah, James Q. Wilson. Now, when we are dealing with uh, the Lenten sacrifice, 
The idea is that we give alms to people that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, churches say, you know, we, we have an opportunity to give to people who, who are hungry. We have an opportunity to give to people who are homeless. We have various uh, organizations that uh, help people uh, to, you know, live. Shelter, food, clothing. Certainly something like St. Matthew's House here in our area is one of those places. And uh, if you do make a uh, attempt at almsgiving, you know, forgetting yourself and living for somebody else, well, there's an opportunity right there to take that money and say, okay, you know, I denied myself, you know, a, a dinner uh, at the Capitol Grill. <laughs> I denied myself, you know, a, a new suit or uh, I denied myself a new car. I'm going to take that money and I'm going to give it for the good of somebody else. And there are people that you don't you don't even know. I mean, let's face it, BC. Uh, first of all, we talk about your children. Yeah, you can give it to your kids. If your neighbor next door is hungry, you'll probably take care of your neighbor too. And uh, But if somebody says, well, I know this guy out in Utah uh, who uh, is living in a box on the street. I don't know how willingly you're going to give up money to send to Utah if it gets to this man. You see it on Facebook all the time. Right. And, and, and I think legitimate um, requests from people who say, oh, you know, this person needs a kidney. Right. I don't know this person. Right. I don't know where they did. Right. But that brings up a question uh, that that uh, I, I, there's no real answer to it. It's sort of a, going down a rabbit hole. But, you know, you see people on street corners with signs, oh, I need help. Um, as much as I would like to help those people, the uh, skeptical part of me says, go get a job. Yeah. Uh, what does that fit in with morality and religion? Yeah. Well, let's just take a look at those people that are on the streets here, uh, here in Naples, but I guess, I guess around the country. Uh, let's um, take a look at this. Uh, first of all, a lot of times these people that are out on the streets begging here uh, are people that uh, don't want to get help from St. Matthew's house. There's food available for them. There's, uh, we have shelter there for them. Yeah. Uh, That's we, my point. Right, exactly. Yeah. And what we find is that a lot of times these people don't want to go to St. Matthew's house uh, because uh, they don't like the rules and regulations. You got to live by rules or else you're going to have chaos in the in, in the shelter. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is, uh, and I'm told this is a very important thing to keep in mind, and this is especially important in, in uh, business areas, and this happens in the big cities too, where uh, these people are camped out in front of uh, business establishments, panhandling, and it hurts the businesses because people are frightened by the panhandlers and some of them become extremely aggressive mm -hmm. uh, into uh, you know, how they approach you and, and what they want from you. So businesses have suffered. The way to go about this, and I know a lot of people feel sorry for these people, especially when they have children with them. They're, these are pros, uh, professional uh, beggars. They know how to you know, touch your heart. And uh, what you do, if you really uh, are interested in helping somebody, uh, tell them to go to St. Matthew's house, number one. A lot of times they're going to say no because they have their own area staked out everywhere. They're the same right. people there all the time. I guess they have some kind of a contract or a union that tells them where they can go. Uh, <laughs> but you might just want to give them a, a sandwich if you carry an extra sandwich with you. Or you have a little $10 uh, card and say, here, go get yourself something to eat. Uh, although you don't know what they're going to do with that money. You know, money either. we're going to take a break in a moment, but I'll just interject this before the break. My wife was hospitalized a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, and we met a woman who was also hospitalized, and she was a professional panhandler, mm -hmm. and she admitted it. Yeah. She said she was making $300 a day in cash standing on a street corner with a sign. Wow. We'll be back mm -hmm. right after this. Action for Life is proud to sponsor a conversation with Father Orsi. Action for Life is an all-volunteer, pro-life, interfaith ministry that's focused on the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. In addition to sponsoring this TV program, Action for Life provides financial support and life assistance to any woman who wishes to carry her baby to term in anticipation of an adoption. 
Action for Life also provides financial assistance to a variety of pro-life organizations, including maternity homes, pregnancy resource centers, anti-human trafficking agencies, and sidewalk advocates, but to name a few. Please consider making a donation so that we can continue in the fight to save preborn babies. You can donate online at actionforlife.org. Thank you and God bless. Hey gang, I know a lot of you sometimes can't watch all of our episodes of Action for Life. However, we have a solution for that. All you have to do is go to YouTube and search for Action for Life Florida. And you can catch up on all the shows and guess what, extra added bonus, you get to hear my weekly homily. So YouTube and you make a fine couple. Welcome back to a conversation with Father Orsi. I'm BC Cloutier. Father, before the break, we were talking about alm almsgiving, mm -hmm. and uh, and I guess uh, we all agree that that is a most important part of the uh, of the Lenten season. Right. Highest uh, virtue is charity, love. And I, I you know, um, uh, somewhere in Matthew it says, uh, "God loves a cheerful giver," mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that's true. I also believe it's true that when you are a giving person. You get more back than you give. Right. Um, it's it's just it's a great feeling. But let's talk a little bit more about Lent okay. and sacrifice. Okay. Uh, there are two other parts of uh, Lenten observance: prayer, and you know, folks, that that's a uh, a no brainer. Uh, Jesus was out in that desert for forty days and forty nights. Uh, he was in deep prayer uh, with with his Father, and. Uh, in that prayer with his father, he had a clarity, the human part of him anyway, got a clarity regarding what his mission was going to be. And it strengthened him uh, throughout his public ministry, prayer continually. You look in those scriptures, Jesus was at prayer, Jesus was mm -hmm. at prayer, Jesus was at prayer. Why? Because in communication with the father, the, the spirit of God uh, is uh, moving him uh, toward his uh, final uh great act of love, which is the cross. And uh, somebody had to be deep in prayer to make uh, that kind of sacrifice. Of course, we're talking about the uh, humanity of Jesus. The divinity always uh, was uh, something that uh, Jesus knew. And uh, But for the human being, uh, prayer is vital. So folks, uh, if you really want to uh, have a very successful Lent, and you want to then even be able to uh, practice almsgiving, you're going to need prayer because prayer is going to move you sometimes to uh, give maybe something you didn't want to give or more than you intended to give. So take the time to, to pray, okay? The other one is uh, fasting. And uh, a lot of times we have lost a sense of what fasting is all about. Sometimes people say, well, I fast one day a week. Well, why? Well, because uh, it's good for my body. It's a cleanse. Yeah, it's a yeah. cleanse, yeah. yeah. Well, if you're doing it for that, it ain't no good that way. I like that. It ain't no good, okay? <laughs> Fasting means that I am entering to solidarity with people who are indeed hungry. And imitative of Jesus, who was hungry. Remember the old devil came around, uh, hey, change these stones into bread. And, right, you know, yeah. you do this and you could have all the kingdoms of the world. And, you know, look, human beings by nature... Physically, we, we do get hungry. Some of us, uh, well, we, we overdo that too. You know, like you were giving up uh, steak and scotch. That was a sacrifice. But then the question is, what did you do with the money? <laughs> I, 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 what did you, you saved a lot on steak. That, the, the scotch costs a lot of money. Steak these days costs about $100 a pound, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as inflation, folks. I mean, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> yeah, I was just in New York City uh, recently, and uh, five people and a baby. Now, a nice restaurant, and it was a celebration, uh, but the bill was almost $1,300. Uh, so How come I wasn't invited to that so, party? So. <laughs> <laughs> so now how much do I have to give in charity so that I don't feel guilty for all that gluttony? I know. Well, <laughs> it won't start until February the 14th. Yeah, and then, you start, then you start the clock running. Uh, but yeah, uh, fasting is an important thing. I remember when you know, we were kids, I'm sure you folks out there remember too. What are you giving up for Lent? I'm giving up candy. Right. Uh, except on Sunday, I have candy on Sunday. 
uh, well, this little piece won't hurt. And by the time, you know, you're like two days into Lent, you would, you're cheating as a kid. You're, you're, the kid, you're cheating. I'm going to go find You didn't cheat. <laughs> you know, you always found some reason. Oh, it's a Sunday. I can, I can have my ice cream now. It's Sunday. And oh, it's a, it's a holiday. Well, I got I gotta, you know, but uh, really, you know, to, to make a, a good uh, Lenten sacrifice, it means to fast and it puts you in solidarity with those who are hungry around the world. And that's the key to have this uh, empathy for other people. The prayer is to, uh, you know, broaden your heart, fill it with God. The, the fasting is to put you in solidarity with those who are genuinely poor. And then the almsgiving is, hey, you know, I've been blessed. And folks, you got to remember that. You got to remember that you and I, for the most part, have been blessed. I go over to St. Matthew's house and uh, you meet some people that really have had it hard in life, you know, yeah. whether it be because of uh, poverty, they're out on the street, they're sleeping in a car, somebody that's been, you know, on drugs and alcohol, uh, homeless. And you go over to St. Matt's and uh, they're finally taken care of. And I say to them, how are you? And they'll look at me and they'll say, I'm blessed. All right. If you're blessed, you got to share the blessing. If you're blessed, you got to share Blessing. I, I have to say to you, until this very moment, I did not think of fasting as being, um, as relating to people who are hungry. I just viewed it as a sacrifice to God. Yeah. Um, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's also very difficult to do. It is. It, it, it's it is. very, very yeah. difficult and folks, to do. And let me fast. tell you something. If you have a medical condition, it's very hard. You don't want to do it. You can't. Right. You can't. So if you're like, you're like old me, diabetic. You got to be very careful as to uh, what you give up. I think the only thing that's allowed uh, for me during Lent is scotch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> We're going to get some letters yeah. about that one, Father. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're coming close to uh, the next presidential election. And the Republican Party has a number of people running for office. Uh, some might say, well, why? And the reason is that the more people that are involved in the process of being elected to office, the more op opinions that we have, and we could pick and choose which ideas and which opinions are going to best serve America. The same is true for the Democrat Party, because although they seem to have a candidate in place, it doesn't mean that the people in office cannot be challenged. I encourage you to listen carefully to what all of the candidates say and see if they measure up with what you believe, with what your values are, with what the Bible says. Uh, oftentimes, candidates say things that we say, I can agree with that. And other times, well, I can't, I can't agree with that. No candidate is perfect. But what we have to do, because we're all imperfect human beings, is to try to pick the candidate that is best going to represent us and our ideas and who we are as Christians and as a nation. So I ask you to please uh, pay attention to what the candidates are saying and to pray for all of them that they might present a picture of what it means to be a true American and a Christian. Welcome back to a conversation with Father Orsi. I'm B.C. Cloutier. Father, let's talk about all of the, um, the symbolism of the 40 days of Lent, which mm -hmm. we're obviously in as this airs. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the big terms we're going to hear during Lent is the term of metanoia. It's a change of heart. I heard a, heard a Greek priest, uh, and I'm sure he's saying it better than I have, said it to you this morning, matanya, <laughs> matanya. So that's how the Greek pronunciation is, change of heart. And that's what Lent is basically about, is the time to change our heart. We began the program talking about Ash Wednesday and Valentine's Day falling on the same day. Folks, this is going to be a tough one. I mean, you know, you got a heart box full of candy, and then you're not supposed to eat the candy if you gave up candy. <laughs> so you're going to have to work this one out yourself, you know. And also, if you want to go out and have a, a special dinner with your, uh, with your sweetheart, um, well, it might, it might be a challenge. It's uh, uh, two uh, light meals and uh, abstinence, no meat. 
And uh, the last one is the one regular meal. Again, you know, health permitting and age permitting. Mm -hmm. So uh, it falls very much in with the theme of the prayer, uh, the fasting, and the almsgiving. This change of heart, right? what do you do with this change of heart, this uh, metanoia? Uh, the uh, analogy that I could make is that we have to perform what we call spiritual cardiology. <laughs> right? And uh, we have to begin to take a look at our own heart. And, uh, you know, if we uh, find ourselves that, um, well, I've kind of been pigging out on life. It doesn't just mean food. We can't pig out on life. We could have, you know, the most uh, expensive car, you know, a beautiful home, vacations, uh, clothing, all of those things. You might say, like, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a piggy uh, in life. And you might say to yourself, well, I have to uh, change my heart. And, you know, in, in the medical profession, they tell us to cut down on fat. If you, you know, have those arteries that are beginning to build up cholesterol. Uh, it, it might be that uh, you need some spiritual cardiology. And it might mean that you say, well, I'm going to a fast uh, and stay away from like you did, you know, the steak and maybe the, the candy and cookies and all of that stuff. Uh, and in, in doing so, you begin to uh, open up those clogged, clogged arteries again. It's kind of like a uh, catheterization, okay? <laughs> uh, another thing is we find some people that um, have what we call a uh, hard heart. And it means you don't give a darn about anybody else. Right. It's all about you. Right. It's all about you. So you have this, this hard heart. And, you know, I, I've, I've seen this where um, in the hospital, somebody comes in and they have a heart that's begun to calcify. Calcify. Physically calcify. Physically calcify. Really? And, you know, you say it's, it's a hardness of the heart. And, uh, again, you know, with, with something like that, we uh, talk about the, the importance of, um, of, of almsgiving because what do we do then? We have to uh, be able to actually do a couple of bypasses on the heart. And uh, the bypass is that, you know, I'm forgetting about me. And I'm going to worry about somebody else for a change. And, you know, maybe, you know, through um, maybe through surgery or maybe through uh, medication, we can, you know, get that heart healthy again uh, and stop the calcification that's taking place in the heart. Now, you're a cardiologist out there. Uh, I'm hoping I'm getting all of this stuff straight. You know your business and I know mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, Father, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. There's one more part to it. And it's uh, what we call the puffed up heart. And the puffed up heart means uh, I'm proud. I don't give a darn about anybody else. Uh, I know better than God. Okay. I know better than the Bible. I become a God unto myself. So, you know, we tried the prayer. We uh, tried the, the, uh, the, the fasting. We tried the almsgiving. What do we do now to uh, get that puffed up heart how do we get that heart humbled? And it is, you know, it, it is all three. And sometimes you need that radical change of heart. You need a heart transplant. If you think you're God <laughs> and nobody matters and you know everything, and even, you know, the, the Bible and, and the, the whole church or the whole community is dumb except you, you need a transplant. And uh, that, that transplant is going to take place with uh, the, the prayer, uh, the fasting, and, and the almsgiving. You need all three working together. As a matter of fact, you're going to need all three during Lent. You know, work on all three. Not just, well, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to say an extra uh, Hail Mary today. Uh, no, uh, it goes along with uh, a little bit of fasting where you're going to give up your uh, Twinkies and, uh, and almsgiving. You're going to give something to somebody else and uh, get that heart uh, to be modeled after the heart of God, the model of Christ himself. There's an interesting thing about almsgiving, Father, and that is, you know, we, we live in a consumer society in America, mm -hmm. right? And everybody wants everything, a nicer car, a nicer, blah, 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 right? Um, when you aspire to, let's say, I want to buy a Mercedes, I, I just I always wanted one of those cars, and you'll notice this, ladies and gents, after you get it, after about a week or two, Eh, it's a car, yeah. right? It doesn't make any difference. That's true of so many things that people acquire. And at some point, you have to say to yourself, do I really need a bigger house or can I 
put the money to good use in helping others. Right, right. And it's a decision that, you know, we all have to, you know, examine our conscience. And we talked about, you know, go in prayer, see what the Lord is telling you, go in prayer and uh, begin to uh, open up uh, those uh, arteries uh, going to the heart. Uh, you know, you, you're going to be able to laser beam some of the uh, some, some some of the cholesterol out of there, the buildup. Uh, same thing again, you know, with um, when we, we're talking about the the hardness of heart. You know, I'm beginning to calcify because it's all centered on me. There's no love in my heart. And then we talked the the last one is uh, you know almsgiving, and and that one says, hey, look, I need a transplant. <laughs> I got I got to go a little bit further. I hear you. Okay. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to a conversation with Father Orsi. I'm B.C. Cloutier. Final thoughts, Father? Yeah, final thoughts is uh, Lent is a wonderful time for us to get back on the right track with God and to put ourselves on the right track with ourselves. Because oftentimes when we are selfish, when we are not in contact with God, uh, we are not the people that God wants us to be. And we're not happy with ourselves. And, you know, really, folks, um, we should be happy with ourselves. We go through Lent and we should be able to come through Lent and say, that was a good Lent. I really feel uh, God's presence in my life. I have made some progress over my selfish inclinations. I've done some very, very good things. If you lost a couple of pounds, folks, well, take that as a bonus, but that's not <laughs> what it's about. What it's about is you getting yourself right with God and having that change of heart. Basically, as I said, it's a heart transplant to remake ourselves unto the heart of God, that heart of God which loves everybody, even those people that we don't like and don't like us. When you get to that point, uh, that's when you're going to know that you made a good Lent. And when you fast, fast until it hurts a little bit. And same thing with almsgiving. You know, when you look at your bank account and you start smiling, you know, at your statements, uh, you got a problem. We should look at the statement and say, Wow, I've been blessed. And with the money that's not there, I've blessed others. Thank you, Father. And thank you for watching A Conversation with Father Orsi. Please join us next week, same time, same place. Until then, I'm B.C. Cloutier. Have a great week and God bless.